What's up, everyone? Shiraz Loni back here to give you part two of this um, addictive key series, and we'll be going over all the functions of the grand piano in this one. All right, so um, let's dive right into it. All right, so last time I explained, you know, this part up here. If you guys don't know, then watch the first tutorial, okay? Now we'll be getting into the really uh, special, unique things that I said were native to um, addictive keys, which is uh, which is the mic section right here. All right. So here you have uh, you have the functions where you could select um, three mics, you know. Uh, or you know one of three or two of three or three of three and mix it all together and in the manual they don't explain like how these mics work or how these mics uh, sound or anything like that so i'll give you guys um uh, basically the overview on mics okay and this part is the most unique aspect of addictive keys so <clears throat> all right if you select the close ribbon all right close ribbon okay um basically in microphones especially the microphones that are used for recording um audio making music um there's three types of microphones okay there's the dynamic microphone there's the there's the condenser microphone and there is the um and ribbon microphone those are the main three okay so if you select um, let's actually start from the close ribbon right here okay so you guys could also click on the screen all right so um, I forget what these models are but um, I'm pretty sure they're probably bloom line uh 4038 like it says right over here and the way these mics are placed on the grand piano you know on the side like this it gives you a wide stereo image like a very wide and ribbon microphones are unique in the sense that ribbon microphones are bi-directional which means if you have a mic ribbon mics record from both sides okay so you have two of these you know ribbon mics that are recording from both sides so it's going to give you a very wide and in some ways it's a very natural stereo image all right uh versus we got the closed tube right here which is the second one that uh, the one right over here and two mics are a form of condenser mics okay but um it's a form of uh condenser mics which are you know powered by tube or valve as the britons call it valve microphones tube microphones and tube or valve gives that very natural characteristic to the sound um I don't know exactly what this model is. It's probably like Sennheisers or something. Um, you could just Google it and 269, it should pop up. And then the way that two mics are is two mics or, or condenser mics are generally um, um, generally cardioid. So, you know, they only record from one side. You know, so you have two ones. I'm I'm gonna guess they did an X Y setting on this, so they're gonna have two overlapping ones going like this. So it's a way more, uh, not as wide as the ribbon mics. And could hear the difference um, um, and then we got the side rib right over here okay uh, we got another ribbon mic uh, the grand piano works in a way where if you're recording from the side like they pictured it right here mm, the 
picture is very descriptive, you know, it tells you a lot. Um, this actually gives you a lot of the high frequencies. If you have the hood open, if you think about it, is the strings are playing up and it's hitting it. And then, you know, you have the piano and then the hatch is up and then it's um, the sound is bouncing out. If you go back here, uh, the hatch, it will hit up here and then it will bounce out to here. So it'll give you a lot of that high frequency content that you want. Plus on top of that, ribbon mics in general, they record, uh, they have a more natural high frequency, probably the best out of, um, out of the three mics that I mentioned, so. A harder, you know, like that kind of sound, more poppy sound. And then we have the mid tube, which is, um, I'm gonna guess they did a space pair on this and then they had one for the let's go back. They had one for the low strings and one for the high high strings and then recorded it separately together. So it gives you a little bit of the stereo image. Okay. But like I said, two microphones in general are very um they're very warm and characteristic, which means like they don't have like all the representations of that high frequency content. So and then we got the body tube. I'm gonna guess this is mono, yeah. So it's just one tube mic and then it's recording. So this is mono. And then we got the side uh we got the or these okay you have the we have the ambient tubes on the end right here which is basically the room mics um and they're picking up room sound you know like the ambient sound like the so that they can mix it in with the actual um actual sound nearby microphones work the same as your ears do so if you're standing far away if you place the microphone far away it's going to have more ambient noise you know more reflective sound coming off the walls all of that good stuff, so <clears throat> ambient, um, if you want to sort of use it like a pad or um, or mix it in with the original signal to give a more uh, natural reverberation, that's what it can be used for, all right? Um, yeah, so that's the mics that are used for, you know, and you can pick from addictive keys over here. And I give them a thumbs up on this. Um, over here, you have the noise function. And you could select a variety of white uh, noises. You know, all of these have different noises. You have like tape, you know. And um, noises, um, characteristically, it's not supposed to be there. It's artifacts that are not supposed to be there. But over time, people found it to be pleasing, you know, so... Um, for example, if you have a vinyl, you know, and you want to recreate that kind of, uh, like, like, old vinyl, like, 50s, like, jazz sound, you want, you might want a little bit of that noise. tremolo settings uh tremolo is basically it's a volume like like a volume um stutter of sorts okay and uh you guys could just mess around with the parameters like i said these small circles can be uh, loaded to the x mod in the session settings you know so you guys might want to mess around with that um, generally on the grand piano i don't really mess around with this because um, the purpose of grand piano is to sound very natural, sound very acoustic. So, once you use tremolo, it doesn't. I'll use it on the other pianos a lot. And then you have the EQ right here self explanatory three band EQ. And uh, f yeah, you have the chorus. All right, chorus and all of this. Uh, you can mix it together, you can make it sound wider than you want it to be, you know. You can select from uh, three of these. So you got the chorus, you got the phaser, you know, and you got the tremolo yet again. I'm going to guess this is the pre-effects uh, pre channel and this is like the post 
you know, so you could you could select from it, see. You know, and then they also have a compression to it depending on what kind of compression you want. And you could try all these different compressor settings to see uh, what works for you, you know. Let's say, for example, you want a more jazzy sound, then you might want some compression on it so that it sounds uh, very muffled, you know, like in a natural way. Uh, stuff like that. Right. Um, and then after this, if you actually click on the, uh, the FX channel right here, then we get uh, two FX you know FX1 and FX2 and um, they're exactly the same you know and you get a you know you can select the room type um, you can make it either delay or you can make a reverb you know select all of this they have hall plate on room it's pretty much what the picture says for those of you that don't know what plate is plate uh, reverb is like a it's like an analog sounding reverb, but they actually have a metal plate and then, you know, you would have springs attached to it and creates like a very shimmering like reverb sound. Mess around with all the settings. I've done it enough reverb tutorials, so go watch that if you don't know what I'm talking about. Alright, and then the master channel, you have, you know, yet again, another, you know, selection of all of these things and um, you know so you get all of that and then there's like a simple low pass or a high high pass filter you know if you want to use it these knobs are what they seem to be you know this is the FX one so if you put this up it sends uh, the thing to FX one if you put this up, it sends to FX2. Okay, and from here you can select whether it's a delay or a reverb. Um, all right, I think that's enough for uh, that's all for the grand piano. Next, I'll be covering you know um, upright and Mark One and electric grand. So. Uh, wait out for that, alright?